Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use the R essentials for SPSS to run a stationarity test for time series data. If you never heard about the R essentials, that's basically a plugin or add-on for SPSS, which allows us to use additional functionalities. If you want to know a bit more or also how to install them, then feel free to visit the corresponding unit in this course. Else I will just assume you already installed them. And well, if you installed them, then with analyze and with forecasting, you can here as with additional time series tests, activate the stationarity and co-integration tests. At this point, I'm only going to talk about the stationarity part. So I only need one time series, which also does not have to be declared to be a time series. So I can just open my data set with this here being my time series data. I put this into variable. And well, if I were to test for co-integration, I could just add the other time series down in the field here. However, aside from doing this, I have to click on text and then select which tests I want to compute. Here you see, that's the part for the co-integration tests. And then here I have two unit root tests and one particular test for stationarity. The most commonly used test, that's what we know here, that's the augmented Dickey Fuller test. And here I can first off select my alternative and thereby my null hypothesis. So here my alternative, so what I actually want to test for would be stationarity. Then I can also define my lag order. So let's start with a simple lag order of one. If I run this, click OK. The result looks as this. It's a little bit different from what we are expecting from SPSS. However, to read this, alternative hypothesis, stationary. So the p-value here actually tells us whether we could accept or um, retain the H0 hypothesis or we have to reject this. So this value is smaller than our normal critical threshold of 5%. We reject the H0 hypothesis. So we accept the H1, so the alternative. So this means in this case, it's stationary. So that's how we can interpret these tests. If you want to do the exact opposite, we can also switch them around. So I could go back here, run again the stationarity test, click on test, but now switch to an alternative hypothesis, continue, okay. So here I would get a p-value of 0 0.99. So I have to retain the H0 hypothesis and here the H0 would be it's stationary. And you see the p-values in this case are more or less complementary. So this was for a lack of one and then I could try for different lacks. Or, if I'm more interested in other tests, I could go back here, stationarity tests, tests, and then try as well the unit root test by Phillips Perron. Again, I'm using the same type. It's like alternative is stationary, alternative is stationary. And I could also use the KPSS test for stationarity. Here, however, my null hypothesis always is I have a level. So I'm basically testing for a level, not so much for stationarity. If I do this, the first two tests, so the Phillips Perron and the Dickey Fuller test, where in both cases the H1 is stationarity, say that we reject H0, both values smaller than 5%. And we accept the alternative. So in both cases, they point towards stationarity. 
Here the KPSS test for stationarity tells us null hypothesis. It's level, there's a level, and we have to reject this null hypothesis. So it works a little bit differently. And well, that's then all I wanted to mention with regard to um, stationarity tests. If you want to see more, first on working with time series, but as well in general on working with SPSS, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.